This is the feedback for section three of the mid course exam. Um, question one was uh, name two features of Sparta's geographical city. Um, this was pretty poorly done um, on the whole. There were a couple of people who obviously knew the dot point and did quite well. I think this is what I'm looking for here. The Redis River, Mount Tegetus, Parnon Ranges, Arcadian Ranges, Port of Gothium, and the Eurotus Valley. Um, some of you just didn't know these and you missed out on two very, very easy marks. Um, telling me that there were five village villages is, is not a geographical feature. A geographical feature is, is uh, a feature of the geography that's there and, and is not man-made. Um, so, honestly, you've just got to learn this. You can't just say that there are mountains either. You can't say there's a river. You have to be specific and, and provide um, the terms. You're looking for terms and concepts for this, this particular dot point um, in this particular question. It's a band one to three question, so it's there to, to help you get a couple of marks on the board before we move into the harder ones. <coughs> the second question was on the role of the Sicitia. Um, and most of you actually addressed the role rather than telling me what the Sicitia was, which was good. Um, but you were trying to talk about how the Sicitia was um, about culture, which was great, but you didn't quite hit the nail on the head with that. Um, if you could have provided a little bit of depth there, you've got to tell me what it was for first, that it was um, it was a mess hall, and you've got to tell me that it was a common mess uh, where male Spartans ate um, their meals from the age of 20 when they were elected up till they were, um, you know, until they were 60 and they retired, essentially. You need to tell me that they were elected into the mess, because that tells us something about the culture of the mess, um, and that they were elected upon completion of the agogi. Okay? And you need to talk about how it was strong relationships between the men because they trained together, they lived together, they ate all their meals together, they shared stories together, they built culture together, and they also fought together when they went on campaign. And some of you had that in your response and some of you didn't. That's pretty important. Um, and this is another important part, which I don't know why, but some of you missed out on that they required, they brought food and produce from their chloros. Um, and if they couldn't bring the food and produce from the chloros or enough, they were expelled from the mess. So this is really what you needed to get, the three marks here. You needed three really good, strong sentences. And I've only got three sentences here, or four, four sentences here. And that's really what you need to get the three marks for this one. A lot of you had sort of half of this, but not quite enough to get you through. Uh, the next question was on Spartan um, art during this period. Um, there were some reasonable responses and there were some poor responses for this particular question. And I've made a mistake here with the marking guidelines. It should be just out of five, which is how the marking guidelines would look anyway. This five marker will be a little bit higher than the three to four. So what we needed to have, there's a few really important points you needed to have here. Um, I've just listed them pretty much here. You needed to say that art changed over time. Okay, there was an earlier golden age of Spartan art, not that it declined most likely because of the Lycurgan reforms. And some of you just missed out on that. The other point is the periodic I didn't see that in many responses. Most of the later art is probably done by the periodic So we need to make sure we're making that point very clear. Then you have to outline the, the nature of Spartan art, which is the stuff from the dot point. So that's that it includes uh, bone and ivory carving, painted vases and sculpture. Some of you were saying painting, some of you were saying pottery, um, some of you were saying statues. You need to use the terms from the syllabus if you're going to get marks. Um, in terms of ivory carving, you can't just sort of say they have ivory carving, bone and ivory carving, you have to be more specific. Okay, you need to have examples of the fact that there were heaps of votive offerings that Adam saw here. Uh, and there were combs and, and things like that um, from sacred dances that people would wear. Um, painted vases, there's Fitzhardinge tells us they had they were never just imitators, but had a strong character of their own. So that's a really good point for painted vases. A lot of you were confusing Laconia one, uh, sorry, Laconia two and Laconia three with red and black figure pottery. Some of you were saying that Laconia two was red figure and Laconia three was black figure. That's not true at all. You need to make sure that you're getting it right. Um, there's two styles of paintings, which is Laconia 2 and Laconia 3. Okay, that's that's um, two different styles. 
but red figure and black figure are two different sort of types of they're separate they're, they're, they're completely separate thing there's red figure and black figure but look only two and look only three are both black figure okay here's what you're all missing specific examples like our Kessler's cup and the lighter cup okay which are both look only three styles all right when you're talking about sculpture there's two types marble and bone so you've got to break it down into those two types as well which um i don't think anyone did uh, marble and stone rather not marble and bone um, and then you need to talk about how um, you've got that quote there from Fitz Harding on the use of bronze in the area. And you can also talk about how the local marble wasn't considered particularly good for um, for, for um, sculpture. Um, so there's a bit of an outline of what it needed to have in here. Here's another quote, and here's a bit more of a response here too. Orsanius, okay, gives us an example of a bronze sculpture, okay, of a statue of Zeus. I know some of you had that. A couple of you might have mentioned, I think, the bust of um, of Leonidas, which was good. I think someone mentioned the Vix bowl, which was found in a Celtic tomb, um, and how that how that gave us a bit of an indication of Spartan um, trade. Um, so it's a pretty good start, but we need a little bit more depth than, than most of you gave. You really need to be able to break it down into those three areas and talk about the changes over time if you're going to get the marks. Okay, last question, question D. Um, this was gods, goddesses and festivals in this period. Um, this question is very similar to one that came up in the HSC uh, a few years ago, a number of years ago, and it's something that um, if you can answer this, you should be able to answer most questions about Spartan religion. Um, in terms of the festivals, or you have to break it down into two sections, gods and goddesses, are one okay um, now and festivals are the other if you're being asked to, uh, to write about gods and goddesses you must put in the ones from the syllabus itself and there are some specific ones in the syllabus Zeus Apollo Poseidon are all mentioned in the syllabus so they all must be in your response Artemis Orthia and I think Athena are both mentioned in the syllabus too so they're a must-have as well so if you don't have those in your response you're just not going to get the marks for this question. And the way I would structure this response is I would have a section on, on gods and goddesses first, outlining who the gods were, what they represented, how people worshipped them, etc, etc. And then I would move on to the festivals and have a paragraph on each of the festivals. So it's really a four paragraph essay and it is an essay, which means it needs an introduction and conclusion and we're looking at three to four pages. Okay, have a look up here again. It's the same as the last section. If you don't have structure, okay, if it's a well-structured response, which means you've broken it up logically, you have topic sentences and concluding sentences that clearly link to the question, your introduction and conclusion clearly address the question and tell me how you're going to answer it or how you've answered it, uh, you're in that top there, and that's well-structured response. If it's got paragraphs, but maybe it's lacking in some areas, then it's gonna be dropping down in this 10 to 12 bracket. If you didn't use paragraphs, this is where you are. Oops, you're in this bottom three bands, okay? The highest you, you're likely to get is nine out of 15, which isn't even two thirds. So make sure you're listening to me when I say it must be an essay, okay, in practice. Um, this also says um, evidence from various sources and the source provided, and that's an issue. Some of you are just ignoring the fact that there's a source there. Um, some of you are incorporating good solid quotes from it and some of you aren't okay and i'm going to look at that a little bit more in the response um so there's i haven't used a source in this one this is to give you the content and what you need to to practice doing is having a look at how you can incorporate sources into your response most important okay so just very quickly to, to outline this, I've just got a, a, I've just put together a few different paragraphs that I've got here that will show you a couple of things that we're really looking at, okay? And it's this isn't well structured. I've just quickly thrown it together, okay? Um, I've put two responses together actually for this just to show you what content needed to be in there, okay? But these are the kinds of sentences you need. We need to say that Sparta was a polytheistic society, all right? The fact that it had more than one god. Okay, various gods and goddesses and festivals that celebrate and worship the specific gods and goddesses. Okay, so that's really outlining the answer to the question here. Okay, Spartans were often not taken seriously because they followed religious rituals really significantly. So talking about the 
importance of religion to society in general. Then I'm going into some detail. Okay, this isn't for this one. This is another question I've, I've used for the from the past paper to show you. So I wasn't completely rewriting the whole thing. Um, we've got Artemis Orthia. I've said who she was. Uh, that Spartan citizens worshipped Artemis Orthia, who was the sister of Apollo. There was a temple of Artemis Orthia, often populated by women. Okay, she was the goddess of fertility and also the protector of women and children's health. We've got votive offerings. Okay. That women would go there and worship and visit Artemis Orthia every day. Lead figurines, ivory objects, terracotta figures. Okay, so there's a really good outline of it. We've got a festival of Orthia. Okay, um, there's heaps of stuff here in, in the eyebook. There's the stealing of the cheese festival from Artemis Orthia, which no one had. No one had that at all. Okay, um, what else have we got? Another important figure was Apollo. Okay. The Amicleon, uh, the Amicleon, um, the Amicleon. Uh, you mentioned the Hyacinthia, the colossal bronze statue of Pausanias. That Pausanias mentions, and I really should have had, and I haven't got it in there. But Zeus, Poseidon, you just need to say who they were. You know, you can mention that um, Poseidon was a god of the sea. Okay, you can mention that um, Zeus was uh, worshipped to by the Spartan kings, um, etc., etc. Um, then. Here's the section of the festivals. There's three main festivals, the High Kintia, the Kane, and the Gymnopadia. Okay. Um, obviously they're not depicted in the source, that's from another another one. But the oh sorry, it is depicted in the source, that one. Um, and they were all important to Spartan society. They paid, paid, um, sorry, paid homage to their particular gods and they helped perpetuate the Spartan social order developed by Lycurgus. So I'm linking it back to the fact that they were an isolated militaristic society. Alright? Then I've got a fair bit of detail. If I do a word count on this, I've got 150 words roughly per festival. Right now, that's 450 words. You're looking at 600 to 700 words all up for this section. All right, I've got the High Kintia. Where was it held at the Amicleum? Okay, it celebrates commemorating the death of High Kintos, Apollo's lover. Um, the entire population attended. Had two main stages, sorrowful and rich uh, of ritual grief, in a in a um, in a time of communal joy. Now most of you had that, which wasn't terrible. Okay, some of you even had this quote from Richter. Okay, that it was about agricultural prosperity, which is good. And but so here's the thing: you're not doing, you're not talking about the significance. Many of you are just ignoring the significance of the festival. Um, agricultural prosperity, symbolic of the replacement of the pre adoring god of Hykynthos with the adoring god of Apollo. So these are the things that you're just forgetting. The, the bond, the male-male bond that we see between Apollo and Hykynthos, that's also replicated in the Ugogi. Um, but again, you've got to tie it back to the festivals to emphasize the roles in history of Spartan, of Spartan society. If we're not doing that, you're just not answering the question. Gymnopadia, again, um, this a lot of you had gymnopadia in your responses okay you said the defeat of argos seventh century or defeat by two argos at the seventh century uh celebrated the defeat of argos at the battle of thraea um most of you had the fact that it was a chorus in, in the marketplace of sparta and this was helped by the fact that the source addressed this one so if you didn't have it in here you were in trouble so there's some Plenty of information here about that they, there was the dancing, uh, commemorated the victory, etc., etc., um, and that needed to be in there. Okay, the dancing in the hot sun and the ritual dance and the choros, all that kind of thing. Um, a lot of you, a lot of you, ignored the carnea. I don't know whether you'd forgotten it or, or what, but that needs to be in there as well. Okay, legend of Carnos. Okay, according to Pausanias, um, happened during the Doric month of Carnaos. Okay, and it was about their military way of life again, and it was about predicting the future. Um, we've got men building rafts, about the fact that they they made their way over to um, to this part of the world, um, and then you've got the divination aspect, which is where they're predicting the future with the chase the runner festival, um, and the great great cluster runners chasing after them, and it was about living in the field. It was about military-based society, the fact that they were like replicating what they were doing when they were away on campaign. All right, um, And then, I don't have it here, but you need a short conclusion saying that um, the Spartan gods were, were generally unique to Sparta, and Spartans take their religion very seriously, and that um, there were three main, relig uh, three main religious festivals, each of them 
uh, played a significant role in worshipping the gods and reinforcing the Spartan way of life. Okay, so you, if you didn't do well in this, which is most of you, you need to practice it and redo it and give it to me again. And, and that's what we'll be doing in class. Okay.